wird jetzt anders. Okay, let's start with the question and just shout out your answers. Are you more likely to go to the pub on a Thursday or a Friday? Friday. Right, Friday. That's pretty logical because you don't want to feel hungover at work the next day. But what about this? Are you more likely to make your country independent on a Thursday or a Friday? Friday. <laughs> Most of you pre seem pretty unsure about this. Um, and that's because you would probably vote exactly the same way on any day of the week. Well, my research shows that that's not true, that weekday does make a difference. I found that outcomes of decisions are different depending on the day of the week on which they are taken. <laughs> Why? Because one key element to all decision making is how much risk you're willing to take. And I discovered that the willingness to take risks changes across weekdays. I did this by using a reliable and simple game. To earn real money, you blow up this on-screen balloon, which will at some point pop. Now, how far you blow up this balloon gives you a risk score. You can play this game on every day of the week, and you can then compare those risk scores across weekdays. Now, this is a computerized task, but I thought you might like a live demonstration. So, I have brought five balloons, and I'd like to get five people to come on stage. I can actually offer you beer. <laughs> so if people can just start coming on stage, I can imagine this is being quite popular right now. There's also a prize for the winner. So this is a, a double whammy, as we call it in the UK. So can people just come forward? Way, thank you, one down. We'd like four more, please. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Just one more, guys, one more. There's beer. <laughs> yes, Ben, thank you. <laughs> Making everyone happy today. All right, so what we're gonna do is an alcohol test. Okay, are you all ready? <laughs> This is actually not true. We're gonna just have a little look at this game. Um, the aim of the game is to get the biggest balloon, okay? Now, the most important thing here is that the person with the biggest balloon wins. But there's one rule, that if you burst your balloon, you are disqualified. So each person here needs to decide for themselves how far they blow up their balloon, okay? Does that all make sense? Okay, now if you wanna take Take, take center stage here for me. Okay, now to make this a fair competition, I'm gonna get you all to close your eyes. Then I'm gonna count down from three, and then you start blowing up your balloon, okay? Now, <laughs> it's up to you, remember, how far you blow up this balloon. Now, when you're done, you hold up your balloon. And when you're all done, and you like, have your balloon holding up, then I will get you to open up your eyes, and we'll decide who is the winner. Now, the winner, to make this incentive even greater, <laughs> is this box of lovely Ferrero Rochers. OK, so is that all clear? Are you all ready? Excellent. Three, two, one, go. As far as you can go. <laughs> Keep it up, doing really well. <laughs> now you can see why they made this into a computerized task. Keep going, keep going. Now when you're done, if you want to hold it up. <laughs> We've just got one more person still going, excellent guys, good job. <laughs> okay, now let's see, who do we think is the winner here? I see a lot of... <laughs> okay, I think we've got a clear winner. You got most votes. Thank you very much for this demonstration. Feel free to take your balloons or let them go. <laughs> okay, so what you'll see here is that with five different people, even though we gave all of them the same rules, they'll blow up their balloon further, even though there's the same risk of it popping. 
So there's an individual difference here. And that individual difference is predictive of real-world risk-taking with real-world consequences. Now imagine that those five people were actually one person tested on five different weekdays. Now we actually see that the differences we see here is quite similar to the differences we see for one person being tested across those weekdays. Actually, these results are quite striking. Risk scores are high on Monday, go down on Tuesday and Wednesday, and reach their lowest point on Thursday, where we become most cautious before reverting back to original risk levels on Friday. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, what does this weekly cycle have to do with voting? Well, as it turns out, every UK election since 1935 has been held on a Thursday. <laughs> In most other countries, too, elections are always held on one particular day. Now, the question is, does this matter? To find out, I analyzed voting intentions of 80,000 people across all weekdays ahead of the Scottish independence referendum. We found that 4% more people voted against independence on Thursdays. I found the same pattern for Brexit and the election of Donald Trump. So, when it's a close call, the day of the week on which an election is held could change the outcome. <laughs> and that's not all. I found, equally I found weekday effects with equally serious consequences in FBI crime statistics, economic data, and even in healthcare. So, these results are scary, but also useful. If we understand this weekly cycle, we can use it to our advantage. For example, by employing this knowledge we have about the weekly cycle to hospital scheduling, we were able to reduce missed medical appointments, which cost every country a lot of money, by 12%. But perhaps more importantly, we can arrive at decisions that we don't regret. Thank you for listening. Thank <laughs> you.